some of the dogs whose results have come in. Okay. Um, what are, what's the standard that you're using for the first pavilion? Is it going with the current one, or what the original one of the change of two in 2010? Or are you using, like, <coughs> California and Michigan have lower standards, or you do the 700 part per million, which is extremely high? Or are you using what was suggested back in uh, 2010 for the 72 point per million? Where are they at? So that's, a, that's an Sorry. excellent question. Um, and I'll explain it in a minute. I just want to make sure that the other question is fully answered. And I know I still have to answer yours. So okay. I haven't forgotten about you. Um, so yeah, so with the dioxins, are we have set the criteria in the plan, and it's actually not parts per it's parts per trillion. So it's uh, it's uh, several magnitudes of order. Uh, so it's parts per million, parts per million, parts per trillion. So uh, the dioxins, um, you know, because of their because of their risks, have a very low uh, risk based threshold, and we set we made sure that we could detect it down to the, what we call the residential screening level, which is really low. So, the number is 4.8 trillion, so much below the 70. Okay, so we'll be able to see it 4.8, um, you know, down to at least 4.8. That's the residential level. We, uh, with the laboratory method, we can see it a little bit lower, but that's we had to see at least that low. Um, not all the samples we're collecting are on residential properties. Some are commercial, some are recreational, some are agricultural. Um, so if we see a hit, uh, get a detection, say on a commercial property that's higher, let's say it's 100, right? That's, that's not necessarily a concern because that's not where somebody lives, right? But if it's on your property, we're interested in seeing it down around that residential screening level, not up around that um, action level that you were describing. So, okay. so um, we're not looking at it in terms of what's our, what's our, what's our threshold for action work, but looking at it what is, what's the minimum risk level. That's where we're determining analytical, okay? I can't tell you at this point where we would take action if we do find elevated levels. Normal background for uh, urban and rural uh, environments is somewhere in that 1 to 11 parts per trillion range. Okay? So if we see it significantly above that, that might um, motivate us to do more assessment. Uh, we'll just we'll have to see. Again, we just want to make sure we can see the lowest level possible. That air monitor that's hanging up with the bag covering it below the tube, how accurate is that thing? So it, it depends on um, which one it is. Uh, is it the bigger one, the, the big yellow box with the bag on? Yeah, it's like a little yeah. one with the bag hanging over it. Yeah, so that's a multi-gas, it's called an area ring. It's a right. multi-gas monitor, and um, it's accurate, as it's to your question. Uh, it's accurate down to 0.1 parts per million for volatile organics. All right, so the monochloride is a volatile organic. Um, the butyl acrylate is a volatile organic. So and that machine goes lower than the one you're checking the house. So yeah, so the, the that one that one doesn't go lower. The, the, that one and the ones we're checking the house go down to 0 0.1 parts per million. Okay, and this gets to his question, so I answer both at the same time. All right, and then I got another answer for you on on water sample down <laughs> down the way. So so all right, the uh, the machines, both the machines that were used in the homes and the machines that are hanging on the telephone poles. Um, they, they, some of those are multi-gas meters where we can see hydrogen chloride, carbon monoxide, uh, and a bunch of other uh, gas sensors. But they also have that photoionization detector, which is that whole organic meter. It goes down to 0 0.1 parts per million. Now, the problem with that is, is our vinyl chloride action level um, is five, if, if the, the long term was 500 parts per uh, billion, which is 0.5 parts per billion. So just above that, that, that level of detection, right? The butyl acrylate is uh, after the emergency phase, we drop that down to 20 parts per billion. So we can't see that lowest level of that machine. All right, and that's important. But you can smell butyl acrylate at much lower levels. So uh, yes, there is a chance that that chemical could be present and we don't see it with that machine. I mean, you need to understand that, right? Butyl acrylate, yeah, butyl acrylate's an irritant. Right, it, uh, it, and it can cause um, some of the, the symptoms that people have presented. Um, if that is what's causing it, I don't know. Um, but, I, but again, we can see to a certain threshold in those machines. But every time we go, they say something about it. They they put they both your pet, you know your house tested with this little machine, and it's like, and I I know you know 
doing my research, that machine doesn't mean anything. It, I mean, it really doesn't because if they go below that 0.1 level, you have your flooring, your walls, your paint, your plastic, everything throws off the OC. That's right. That's right. So it, it, it only tells you if you have a serious problem, right? So it, what I would be concerned about death. In the right. That would always be death 0.1. What, what I, yeah, what I'd be concerned about with uh, the, with the ball of organic monitor is the bottom floor, right? uh, because uh, the bottom floor right, is it's a cancer causing agent. You don't want that. <laughs> You don't want the exposure to the bottom floor, right? The, the, if you have a low level beta acrylate, it's way good. Winning. We did. We got exposed. We yeah. did. Everybody come to my funeral in five years, thank you. If you have a low level beta acrylate exposure, it's an irritant, right? It's not going to cause any longer. Is it, is it is only that you're finding in the trick? Is it, is it beta acrylate Because now I, I went down myself to the creek, I fished that creek yeah. my whole life. There's spots where that stops 18 inches down in the creek. Right. I know. That's and the, they're blowing, they're aerating it. Are they trying to do it? Are they trying to solve the problem by dilution? Or are they trying to solve the problem? I, I don't know how. To yeah, me, yeah. it's going airborne. Again. So it depends on what part of the creek we're in. Uh, up in Sulphur Run, uh, they want to remove it, just dig it out, right? Because it's the, the ecology of the Sulphur Run isn't, isn't very good, um, uh, you know, because it's, in, it's, in, it's an urban area, right? But when you get down to Leslie Run, that's a, that's a sensitive area right there. Um, uh, and I'm just telling you what the Ohio. Guys, because they're the experts on, on the surface you. water, right? You know, there's salamander down there, there's uh, hellbender. But that was in the North Fork, Florida. So that's all the way up through Beaver Creek. Right. Those are actually still dormant right now. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really surprised they found a hellbender right. while it being dormant. But it was in the North Fork. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. But, yeah. but the, the point is, they don't want to go in and just dig that out because it is a sensitive ecosystem, right? So they're, they're using, they're trying to speed up the natural biological process by stirring up, yeah, by stirring up the sediments. Getting it up, and when it comes to the surface, they're collecting it with sorbent. Yeah. But if, it, if, they're, if they're spraying, this is just one more question. If they're spraying it, it's not going deep enough to irritate the aggregate down there to get it on it, to even come close to getting it out. So I've heard that I've heard that concern expressed a number of times uh, in previous meetings like this, and um, and this gets to your other question. So you guys, you guys are kind of <laughs> team it up. Uh, so you know, your other question was, what about Negley and? about the river down down that way and uh yeah because we're all exposed already yeah. i got paperwork from the hospital i got to keep growing ties due to chemical fuels and i was out of the same day out of this i'm even with the plot right here i went to negley when we got relocated which wasn't the right idea because they yeah. had it too so <laughs> they're down in a valley but it took a lot of us complaining to everyone why it is sitting there going through these um waters why it's going through this air why it's getting deeper into our soils a month and it's going to be a lot more for it to get cleaned up. And it's like, is our town ever going to be safe? Are we going to let our kids go out there and play? It's always going to be in the back of our minds now. So, uh, I just, and because of the issues that, that you raised about the surface water, it, the surface water cleanup is going to take longer than the, you know, the major cleanup that's been happening around the railroad tracks. Is there an estimated time? So, that one's hard. I, I, can't, I can't give you a number on that. I can give you a number on the railroad tracks and, and the heavy contamination there. That's going to be... Yeah. Uh, at least three months, right? Um, what about the properties, though? But, but well, that thought, so, so <laughs> right. um, But the, the walk up, we ordered the, the railroad to give us a, a series of plans. One of them is a potable drinking water plan, which will address drinking water wells, which will also uh, address the municipal system. We also asked for a surface water uh, plan. Uh, we haven't, uh, we, we've seen the potable plan. Um, it's highly inadequate, so we got comments back and we're, we're waiting for their, the, the revised, the proposal one. We want to make sure all the chemicals of concern are, are listed in that plan. On the surface water plan, uh, that's one of the things we'll be looking at. How far down are they going to be addressing the <laughs> right? And that's that's where... Yeah, because they got the soot too from that controlled uh, burn. All that smoke and that soot went to neighbors too. So they sit out there and went through their wells and went through their soil and their ground. They got pounded. They were really they, yeah, they, they they got got idea how much butyl acrylate was actually <laughs> in the creek. That had to be an enormous amount. I thought the oil. I know that when well, yeah. I came through Negley, like the day after, as soon as you come around the corner by Bell, by uh, by road, it they smelled it worse than it did anywhere in Palestine. So, too many. Yeah. That creek has to be so contaminated. Wild game. They changed the color. Yeah. Well, it had to be. 
the color change. Given the fish gel, given what we know about the uh, the, the barometer itself, it had to be the normal spot. Where did the oil go that was on the tray? <laughs> I mean, so, nobody's mentioned that. 60,000 <laughs> gallons of non has loose. It's interesting about the oil. You get remember there's a fire going on. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's what sustained the fire uh, as long as it did. Um, you guys, I, I, I didn't. I was there. Down, I mean, I wasn't there during. Guys, I was keep this. I wasn't there during the emergency. <laughs> so uh, did you see oil floating down the creek? I don't know. Yeah, there's definitely. I live. Um, over run in town. Um, I'm actually about 1.1 miles out. You know, half of my other side of my street was evacuated, not my side. But even I'm about I'm like 50 yards downstream from where they had two aerators, and you could still see bubbles of oil uh, floating on top of the water. So there was some, so some type of that oil, um, and also you know when people were throwing the rocks in and all that colorful stuff is coming up from the sediment. Um, I was told that that was some type of petroleum. petroleum. Yeah, that's not the fuel right? right? It creates that sheet. That is not the So the, the butyl acrylate should look like, it should have like a kind of milky film to it. Yep, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the rainbow is actually the oil that is coming out of the be. center? It could be. I mean, that's the that's yeah. typical indicator that's of petroleum. That's so. the best way to describe it whenever I saw it. Kind of looks like fish smell.
so there's not that much exposure, so less vapor gets in the air. What is the difference of doing both tracks at the same time and exposing it? Then you tearing up one side and you still have the contaminated soil sitting there. That's exposing <laughs> us to anyway. So what's the difference yeah, of doing right. it all? Yeah. I have, and like I said, I absolutely well, do live there. there. Uh -huh. I, my home is 900 feet from the burn site. So before they even started tearing up the side track, I've had a mound of contaminated soil and water tanks sitting right in my property lot. I've had tankers sitting on their side at my property line. My question is, is even though you guys are taking care of the tracks, what about our homes? There's six homes on the one side that you've already tore up. Where is that contamination going? It's going into our yard. It's going into our home. And I know that it's in my yard because all of this that they're talking about seeing in the creek, they flooded my backyard because some moron that is working with these people, you have multiple companies down there working. I honestly truly believe that nobody is really ahead of that and in charge because who in their right mind would release clean water out of tanks that they're using for rinsing, drinking, whatever they're using it for, they release that. All of that ran right through my backyard and I seen the foam, I seen my yard bubbling, I have a video of it. Um, called the train company, they come out, and his response to his co-worker was, have you ever seen anything like that before? <laughs> but it's okay for me and my family still to be there, but let me relocate you, now they're coming to me, let me relocate you for six months. I can't keep moving my family. We have a very large family. My home's never going to be safe. I know that. I know it'll never be safe because how are you going to continue to tear that soil up, tear up my yard, keep coming because as much rain, we're headed into spring. We don't get spring here in these fallacy. We get rain, snow, solid, and that's it. But in your insulation, your floorboards, in your wall, Absolutely. Companies, in your yeah. eaves, it's in there. you got good insurance? No. Yeah. So no. Burn it. You're right. I'm, I'm pretty much stuck there. So more fire than but well. My opinion is, like, all of that is coming our way. All of that contamination is already there. So not just me and my family and our homes right there exposed. That's continuing. And all of the stuff that they're bringing from back there, all these trucks that are running through, I watch every day. I've seen a rainbow coming up the side of my street, right by my driveway. Now they have a water tank that's coming up there, driving down one side, literally shooting water out the side of this tank to clear these roads. That's going to my front yard now. So now we are surrounded there. We don't have sidewalks out there. There's no way to block that. My biggest question is, who is in charge? Who's saying, okay, this is okay? You know, like, it's okay to do that. It's okay to squirt this contaminated road because our trucks are running out. It's okay to squirt all of that water over onto these properties or to the car washes properties and things like that. Who's, who is actually in charge that is controlling all of these EnviroServe, Pepco, all these other companies that's working out there? Who's saying that this is okay? Well, I, I can only answer part of that question. Okay. Um, and um, you know, it, obviously it's, uh, it's the railroad's responsibility to manage something. Right? But your question really boils down to who's overseeing the, uh, the, the, the primary company. And we and the other uh, responsible agencies are supposed to be doing that. So um, that's, a, that's a very specific concern for a very specific area that we'll protect. Um, right? Do you test like... So then there's then there's the, the, then there's a sampling piece. Of it. So there yeah. were there were several questions in in your discussion, right? Yeah. And uh, one of them, where where is the contamination going underground? Uh, where is it going over the ground? Is what's happening, um, you know, in your front yard affecting your soil? Right? You know, I would I would argue without actually having having been there and seen your yard and seen mm -hmm. your situation um, that. You know, there, there needs to be more, uh, before 
everything's done on the south side. There needs to be more sampling and analysis on the surface soils in those areas than just the semi volatile organics, right? And, and the dioxins. Uh, there's, there's more going on there because you're right there. I hate to use this word, but browns again. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Um, I, I do think, just to um, speak a little bit to Shelby's situation and the situation of those houses um, that are right there that somebody should individually visit their houses from the EPA. Yeah, and just to let you people know from that point, you're not the only one getting ignored. Because until my big mouth started going, nobody showed up at my house. Nobody. nobody. Right. They didn't even put a flyer on my door. So don't I do have to house. ask, and this isn't confrontational, like three or four weeks ago, did they offer to move you? No. Nobody has offered to move me at all. That's where my kids like to it. The only thing, they relocated. That's it. That's what I mean, relocating. Oh, the relocating. Is it like three or four weeks somebody tried? No. Okay, thank when you. When they have asked like, for me to relocate, is the same time that they evacuated the whole one mile. Is the only time we got evacuated. And then when they, they came to me right before they started tearing up the tracks, then it was relocating. Yeah. It's the same time that they did everybody else yeah, okay. of, yeah. offering. Nobody came out to our places to, it, to my knowledge. Now I'm the only one that owns in that, like, the six houses in the front. I don't know about the six houses in the back, but I am the only homeowner right there where he also renters. So a lot of them have relocated and had moved. I don't have that option. Shelby, um, how I got the house was I explained to them that <coughs> my mother could not stay in a hotel room. Yeah. I had to contact the railroad for that. Yeah, but and I have, I, and now was, they are wanting to yeah. relocate me for six months. But six months. Well, is, your name was just brought up a long time ago, and we were like, go yeah. and make. Okay. No, they have just for the sake of you, how you do up to we'll move to the middle table. Yep. Um, and I hope that you know the EPA um, will do some more of these smaller <laughs> sessions. I feel like people are getting a lot of answers from the transparency um, and being able to discuss individual situations. It's hard to do when we have the town hall because we have such limited amount of time. So I'm hoping that this is something we can continue to do um, to answer questions. So I'd like to move to the middle section. Of the so I'll, I'll, give you my Sorry, I'll give you my card. I'll give you my card. Well, I'll give you my card. Uh, we can do it afterwards. Yeah, yeah. 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 we can definitely. Now, with that said, just a question to you that I'm going to move on. So with her situation, I've seen her video, and it was a while ago, and it was a part. And now I'm hearing a lot of the same things, and people do not want to live in their house. With the relocation, is is there a show of hands of anyone that would like to say if they do want to go back to their home if, if we're just released back? No. Show of hands. So a lot of people don't feel comfortable even. If we would have another round of air tests or cleaning. I, I still, I feel like I would be comfortable even with my son. And for yeah, and from what I saw with her video. I know it's very close in probably at this time in my home. Because that flood that came through and that bubbly was halfway through my yard. And I, and I again, that's that. And uh, anyways, your, your question is your point. Um, you know, I, I know that, um, well, we are in discussions right now with the company about another round of uh, home cleaning. But the front home cleaning is a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because what I understand from having discussions with many of you, that the first one was pretty weak. They were deodorizing, yeah. is what they told yeah. me that they were yeah. basically for breezing our houses. Yeah, I went into one. I went into one home where uh, at least they cleaned it. They claimed that all the walls and floors uh, and surfaces were cleaned. And I guess those are problems. They 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 stuck a defaulter like you do for like cockroaches yeah. in your home. Yeah. Sprayed it, and they didn't even wipe off the counters and the floor. They said, "Go no away." Yeah, so they didn't even well, show that was right. Right. It wasn't even before the abuse. No, they didn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if that happens, if that if that does happen again, um, you know, it, it'll be if there's another cleaning program on the table.
more it'll be it'll be overseen, it'll be done. So now after that we still don't feel comfortable if there's something that can't be done. So um because we don't care about and the, and the question, the question you heard, the, question, the other question that's about here, and no chance that can, but, um, we are looking at some sort of neighborhood-based air sampling program. But first, you know, we, we, we know what the chemicals of concern are, right? and we're, we're monitoring for those around the work site. And we're not seeing, you know, other than the butyl acrylate, we're not really seeing anything at, at levels that would be of concern in the neighborhood. But then we're hearing your stories. And we know that there's got to be... How is there other. no other cleaning or process in way right now? How? I, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. How is there no other cleaning being done? You guys had a sanitary. Oh, you mean in the indoor? Yeah. Indoor. Yeah, that's that we're trying to work that out. I mean, that's that's. that's the already, I know. I know. Yeah. Back in contact with me, and I never heard word. They realize their inadequacies. They, there was a lot of complaints. I I feel a lot of places. We saw the camera, the security camera footage of the one guy's cleaning, and yeah. it was a joke. We, yeah, I, 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 I mean, they were working with a guy that owns a yeah. company of Santa. Yeah. Yeah. I'm he said, he told him openly, he had no idea how to do this stuff. He is not built for doing the cleaning, what he needs to do. Yeah. <coughs> I'm hoping it's real soon. That's, that's the best I can give you right now. So next time we talk, if it still hasn't happened, there's something wrong. Your question is, you're, you're on <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have four, but they're short. So the, the independent tester that you guys are consulting with, have they gotten, have you gotten any results back from them yet? Like, have they read it out? Me? Yes. Okay, sorry. The city. We have not, they're just going over the data. Okay. We're going to go over all that data. If the data doesn't make sense, then we are going to test. If, if our, if, if our uh, contractor doesn't feel that they were getting the right data or it wasn't how they should, they would have done it, then they're going to go through and they're going to retest. We have not done any private testing yet because the problem is if we do private testing, um, then we're liable right. for the fix right. is what we were told, and that's not how we're doing it. So we're going to go over their, their data. If their data is okay, then if we don't so like it. you haven't that, gone over it with them yet? No. Okay. It's, and we're still collecting and everything, and then they'll go over Will you release that to Absolutely. the public then? Absolutely. And then everything that every data that every test we've had so far, everything's released on the EPA site. That's where all this is that is coming from that and the contractor and any independent that wants to share their data with us. Because there is some questions of all right, uh, Texas Tech and somebody did a test. We do. What what were they going off of? Were they going off the the same thing as the EPA or were they was it more stringent and okay well, maybe it wasn't more stringent. It was, you know, because you can take data and you can make it look however you want to make it look. Exactly. So That's we a, want we want true can answers. Can we do a? Can we? That I've suggested this before, but probably you because your department is giant. <laughs> can we get a side by side comparison of every single testing company, whether whether it was Texas or Purdue or whatever? And just lay them all out side that's, by side. That's generic. what our company's going to, yeah. our contractor's going to do. Yeah, and they're they're going to say, here's EPA, here's this one, yeah. here's this one, here's this yeah. one. And they're not, I don't want to say, they're going to put it in layman's terms. I don't want to say dumb it down, but I'm dumb saying personally yes. for me, dumb it down. Yeah. Because dumb I'm, yes. I'm not as a chemist, so. Do we have any more questions? I have two. Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Um, so if you guys, if EPA tomorrow said tear up both sets of tracks, you guys have the power to tell them, like, no, tear both up now. Uh, we have the ability to order them to do that, yes. If we order them to tear up both sets of tracks at the same time, I'm sure we did see. Sure okay. They actually did it the smart way. This is my personal opinion. One at a time, because if they would have done both, it would turn into a lawsuit, and for, you know, six months to a year, we would have just been sitting in limbo, because it would have been going back and forth. They have as many attorneys as we do people working in the village. Right. So, like, well, you already have a lawsuit. EPA does have a lawsuit. Right? We, we issued, uh, yeah, the, 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 the administrative order is a legal document. Yes. It's so not, it's not that. Yeah. Now, now, yeah. it's, not a, it's not a lawsuit, per se, but we also have already issued our first, levied our first, um, uh, basically fine, uh, based on. Uh, Three times. 
three times uh, what it's supposed to be. That one will come later if they don't comply with the order. This one was about uh, the 